everything must go. Must self roost. Nor is this all. A thing which we saw, a book which we read at a certain period, does not merely remain forever conjoined to what existed then around us. It remains also faithfully united to what we ourselves then were, and thereafter it can be handled only by the sensibility, the personality that were then ours. One, drumming. Culling my bookshelves, I sit on a drummer's stool. The perfect height as I come to the orange penguins. I reread them through my hands. Charities declined them, no space. My hard line to keep two, to environmentally throw a battered, bitted few, to sell most to Berkelo. Leo and Henry gently sort as I have to walk away, find a pensive corner where capacity extends to six. In a dim cafe, a small sanitised table, sweet coffee, sold and bought three Ikea bags full, repeat next week. Two, I think of Proust's pan of milks, magnolias, sales. It's been like walking into an arcade with fire alarms blaring, a fire truck outside idling, garbling, flashing, a new cafe being fitted out as thrown off sparks. Helen wrote that my COVID plan to read all of Proust was the perfect solution. She has endured the death of a dog and accepted another. And Judith has returned to the piano for three hours a day. I walk my dog at dawn for the shifting twilight, that strange fading indigo, the nil, its cancelling reveal, our tender freeform orbit. I want this poem to barely touch the page. Three. D. H. Lawrence's hat blew into the sea here in 1922. His beach at Thoreau has collapsed under recent pounding waves. It is mesh fenced. A man slips through to sea. I call out. He says, I'm only going this far. I sit along the coast on an almost empty beach. It is cold. A naked little girl, joyously defiant, runs, skips past me. She wears sunglasses, each lens a plastic daisy. We say hi, her sister follows. That stale question, what would you say to your child's self, is answered. Her little brother, carried by her mother, looks like Ed Sheeran. Her father lingers, wringing their clothes.